<laughs> maybe because I broke the streak. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe because it was a secret meditation because I didn't reveal it. <laughs> anyway. So today's meditation is less of a meditation and more of a profound exercise. So I know you have heard of higher self from Bashar like a million times. So what do you think the higher self is? Today we are going to be the higher self. So in order to be, what do you think the higher self is from your perspective? There is no right or wrong answer. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's extension of our, of our being. It's uh, the part of us that we are not aware and that we don't uh, perceive in a 3D dimension. So it's, yeah, yeah it's, it's the, the continuation of ourselves. Absolutely correct. So um, think of your higher self this way. Your body is contained in the higher soul, uh, higher self uh, container and your higher self decided to embody itself, become a physical being, which is you. So what it did is it took out a portion of itself and densified it across various densities. The highest density version of you is your physical self. A little less denser version of you is your fourth density self. Then a little lesser dense is the fifth density self, which is in the fifth dimension. Then slightly lesser is the sixth dimension self and the seventh where your soul is residing and it goes layer after layer after that so your higher self is in the 12th dimension it is operating from that perspective and each uh, existence of you in each dimension has its own consciousness so you are a multi-dimensional being like you are not just operating from your physical perspective you are also operating on the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th dimensions and you are not physically aware of what's going on in those dimensions and that's none of our business either because we are choosing to focus only in the physical dimension when we are in the physical body. So I'll give you a brief as to how I discovered this meditation. This is something I created by myself. I was very frustrated. So in the uh, limiting belief course, we are going to learn how to release the belief. So there was this process that I do very often. I use the mental and emotional release process. And there was this one belief where I was just not making any progress. I was not able to change my perspective around it. And I was very frustrated because that belief was creating very, very negative realities for me. Remember, all your challenges are created by your beliefs. If you remove that belief, the challenge will disappear. This is how it works. This is the simplest mechanism. <clears throat> and we are going to discuss more in that course. So that's when I realized that like, if I am the creator of my reality, and if I'm not able to make sense of it, my higher self will know because my higher self has complete access to my blueprint template. So I wish I could access my higher self. I wish I could know why is this happening. And at that moment, I had a lightning strike. I was like, why will I wait for my higher self to come and tell me something? when I can just go up and figure it out. So as a fun experiment, I thought, let me just do a simple role play. Like, let me become my higher self. Let's see what happens. And after doing that exercise, it created a profound shift in me, like profound. I realized that you can have access to your higher self perspective even in your physical self. You don't have to do an astral projection to experience that. 
and since I can also scan the thought forms with my hand, it's, this is what is taught in our pranic healing school. So I immediately scanned the negative thought form that I had created that was creating this reality for me and it had reduced by 50%. And I started noticing the changes outside the moment I had this experience with my with this specific challenge. So this is the reason why I said that since all the challenges are created by you, and since I'm not discussing how to find your limiting beliefs, it will at least reduce the potency of one or two of the beliefs that created this challenge for you by at least 10 to 50%, depending on how correctly you are doing this exercise. And that is still beneficial. Even if you're not able to release the belief fully, you're still going to get the benefits of the intensity of the belief going down. You're still going to experience the results of that. So before I go into the mechanics of how it is done, any question, anything that I can clear up for anybody? Any doubts? It sounds reasonable so far. Yeah, everything is clear. Yeah, we are. I was wondering if you are, maybe how, are there any available, already available uh, methods that you could use instead of come up with your own? For what? For talking to your higher self. This is the one I found. So you are not exactly talking to your higher self. You are becoming your higher self. Okay. Okay. So the point of this exercise is twofold benefits. One is you will have a complete overview as to why certain challenges are happening in your life which you may not be able to figure out on your own. So that will bring you great relief and it will empower you to handle your life circumstances better. Another benefit of this exercise is every time you are becoming your higher self perspective, you are basically raising your vibration. You're forcing yourself to raise your vibration and think from a higher self perspective. You're truly embodying it. So I remember when I asked my sister to do it, after I did it successfully, I was like, do you want to try? And she's like, yeah. She experienced like a lot of calmness and sleepiness. This usually happens when uh, a lot of divine energy comes into the body and the body is not used to that kind of energy. So I realized the power of this exercise through her. I didn't realize that because I did not feel any sleepiness. She's like, I'm feeling very sleepy. I can barely keep my eyes open. And mm -hmm. I know this because when we do some very advanced meditations, uh, like the twin hearts or uh, when we are doing pranic healing and healing ourselves, I have experienced the same sleepiness. So I know by the signs and symptoms that it is bringing down a lot of divine energy. So that's when I realized that when you're doing this exercise, you are actually becoming that vibration, whether you realize it or not. That sleepiness is coming from that because a lot of divine energy is downpouring in the body and your body can't handle it and you feel tired and sleepy and relaxed and like, like that, that kind of uh, relief or relaxing feeling. So does that clear your question? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense, definitely, yeah. Yeah. So this is how we will do the exercise. I've created this diagram here. So first we will be imagining a challenge. James, you were already... You mentioned something that you wanted to get a perspective on in the chat. So you can use that experience. Hmm. So think of a challenging situation in your life where you are just not able to figure out why that is happening with you. And it has bothered you very badly. And imagine yourself in that situation, like your physical self. And I want you to, like, I'm just describing the uh, exercise. Don't start doing it right now. We will do it together. And as if leave a portion of your consciousness in the body and zoom out uh, a portion of your consciousness from yourself. It's as if you can see your physical self from behind. 
your physical self is still active, is doing the same challenges or experiencing the same challenges. But as if you're looking at your physical self, you're not being inside the body or seeing things from the first hand perspective. You're seeing things from the third person's perspective. You're seeing yourself. Is it making sense? I mean, I'm asking everybody. Okay. So the point of doing this detachment is to create a dissociation from your problems because sometimes when we are in the problem, there are certain things we tend to miss because of our emotional reaction to the situation. When we dissociate from, from our bodies, we suddenly notice things which were not noticeable by us when we were being in that experience that separation itself will give you a lot of clarity now once you separate yourself from your physical self imagine as if there is a building behind you and you are just boarding into the lift and you're going up you're going up to the 12th floor as if you are rising to your higher self where your higher self is so in this diagram i just created a sun-like blob here so imagine this is your higher self and you are merging that portion of your consciousness that you detach from your body with your higher self consciousness so this is your physical self and the lift is here you board the lift and you go up high on the building on the 12th floor and from here you are looking down at your physical self your physical self is still in the challenge experiencing the challenge but a portion of your consciousness in the building, on the top of the building, and you're looking down at yourself. So the most important point of this exercise is the detachment. If you're not able to detach yourself correctly, then you'll not experience the benefits of this exercise. So how will you know you have fully detached? The emotions you feel when you put yourself in the challenge, you'll feel some emotions, right? Like sadness, anger, whatever that is. You'll not be able to feel those emotions when you are up there. Like as if the situation is happening to somebody else, but not you. So if you have problem uh, detaching yourself from your physical self, then use this imagination. Imagine that the challenge that you were thinking of is happening to somebody else who, like the exact same thing that has happened with you is happening to somebody else and you are watching that person's experience on a giant television that would help you create the detachment as if it's not happening to you but somebody else and you're watching it from a distance like an observer so you can use any of these two methods both of them will work uh, before I move on I just want to pause and ask any clarifications that are, that you need? Anything that doesn't make sense? All right. So how do we embody the higher self? The embodiment is... You have to first know what the higher self is. Simply the detachment will not create that embodiment. So the script that you hear, see here, this is the script that you need to call out. This is something I'm going to read out for you right now. But I will also make it available to you offline so that you can do this exercise on your own. This is the script you say to yourself to become the higher self that the higher self is made of nothing but unconditional love. It has no sadness, no unhappiness, no feeling of nothing. It is pure state of bliss. Your higher self is always in a state of pure bliss, state of pure unconditional love. And your higher self knows your past, present and future. Your higher self knows why you have taken birth, for what purpose why is everything happening with you your higher self knows everything even if your physical self doesn't know and whatever experience you have as your physical self it is orchestrated by the higher self and has your agreement nothing happens to you without your permission so 
your higher self wants to wants you to experience only the best in life that is its highest intention it only wants the best nothing else nothing less and this line that you see here this is something i have taken from the book uh, conversation with god uh so this sentence i absolutely love that and this is what god used to say in the book that i have the grandest version of the greatest vision of who you are meaning that there are billions of parallel versions of you and out of those billion versions the grandest one of your greatest vision like you have chosen this lifetime you have a great vision for yourself and of all the possible varieties of parallel selves you could be the higher self knows the grandest version of you and wants to experience itself as the grandest version of itself wants to live its highest excitement so we are going to use this script to experience this level of unconditional love and grandeur and then we are going to look at that situation that your physical self is going through as if we are looking at your physical self from the top of the building we are on the 12th floor we are the higher self and we are looking down and observing what the physical self is going through and as a higher self we are going to ask some questions to us because we are the higher self of the physical self and the answer that you receive is what is going to make all the difference that is going to shift your perspective about the challenges that you are facing so this is the exercise any questions that i can answer anything that is not clear all right let's do it let's take a few deep breaths the belly breaths now think of a challenging circumstance that has been bothering you for a long time and imagine yourself in that situation all over again and notice what emotions you feel in your body if you don't feel okay. good it is all right it's all right it's okay to feel that way your emotions are valid now we are going to leave our physical self behind gently so imagine zooming away from your physical self as if you are floating up or you are using the lift behind to go up on the 12th floor of the building behind your physical self your physical self is on the ground going through the challenges as we speak but an aspect of you is moving out zooming out and moving up the 12th floor gently you are moving out while you are observing your physical self going through experiencing the challenge if you have difficulty imagining or detaching yourself from the physical self imagine that same situation happening to somebody else on a giant movie screen and you're just zooming out instead whatever works for you gently go up on the 12th floor 
and station yourself on the 12th floor. Now you are looking at your physical self from the 12th floor down. Looking down, your physical self is still struggling and you're looking at your physical self from the 12th floor. You have become your higher self. Now, repeat these words after me silently in your head or loudly, whichever way you prefer. It's important you say this to yourself to fully embody your higher self. I am the higher self of my physical version. I am in the 12th dimension. I know things that my physical self doesn't know. I am made of unconditional love. I have the grandest version of the greatest vision of who my physical self is meant to be. My purpose is to experience my highest excitement through my physical self. I know the purpose of my physical self, why it chose to take birth on earth. And I have only the highest and the best intention and the best plan for my physical self. Notice what you feel in your body. when you say this to yourself. Now, as my higher self, what do I want my physical self to realize in this situation? Why did I create this challenge for my physical self? And stay in the higher self perspective and see what answer comes up to you when you are observing your physical self from the above and you are asking this question. What do I want my physical self to realize in this situation? Why would I put my physical self in this situation fully knowing that I have only the highest and best plan for my physical self? Now, whatever answer you have received, in order to check whether the answer has created the shift in you, go back down and merge with your physical self again. Go back down the building, become your physical self again. Come down to your physical self perspective. Merge and become the physical self again. And imagine yourself from the first-hand perspective in the challenge. What has changed now? What do you feel about the challenge now? Notice the changes. Now, 
now some of you may still notice some negative emotions still present in yourself in that challenge in that case ask yourself what else remains what else is not clear to me what else is causing the negative emotion in me see what comes up now that you have some clarity of what remains go back up become your higher self again go back detach yourself from your physical self again go back on the 12th floor look down at your physical self become your higher self again now i'm going to repeat the script again i am the higher self i'm made of unconditional love say this to yourself it's important that you say this repeat after me or with me i am made of unconditional love i know the purpose of my physical self i only have the grandest vision for my physical self i know the past present and future of my physical self and i know why i am creating these situations for my physical self because i want my physical self to evolve and experience its highest excitement now knowing this as a higher self what do i want my physical self to realize given the new questions my physical self has how can my physical self overcome the situation what advice would i give to my physical self as a higher self i'm going to give you 2 3 minutes to have your own realization to stay in the higher self version and see what wisdom your higher self has to share as your higher self what realizations you have and as your higher self what advice you would give to your physical self to overcome that challenge
All right. Come down to your physical self perspective. Gently come down and merge with your physical self. Merge with your physical self and come back to the room. Come back here. Gently open your eyes. Come back. Always end this exercise in the physical self. Don't end it when you are still in a high up. Always end it after coming down to your physical self version. And you can do this up, down, up, down, up, down as many times as you need to. Every time you come down to your physical self, ask what remains. If you still feel negative emotions, ask what remains. And whatever remains, go up and get a different perspective. Come down and check. You can do it many times, as many times as you want. And when you feel satisfied that, yes, I have sufficient good resolution, then you can end the exercise. End it as a physical self after you have merged. So what did you experience? I don't mind going. So my, um, my should, should do you want me to sort of quickly quickly summarize what I was questioning? Um. So yeah, it, it was basically why something happened earlier in the day where my car got scratched and it looked like it was deliberate. So the answer I, that I got was really simple actually these things happen um in order that you can know yourself so that it's about knowing thyself and there's many different layers many complexities many co-creations that's not important the importance is what does it bring up for you and to to be able to see that as as a gift shining a light on a part of you that may not have been illuminated before or if there's a reaction, where does that come from? You seem very moved by this. Yeah, yeah, it just it, it makes sense. It's brought some peace to me. Um, it wasn't like a like a really like um very emotional thing, you know, but it was still curious because it felt like a almost like someone you know like boundary breaking kind of thing activity from outside um but when you kind of realize that you create everything um at least i'm i'm trusting that that's the case um then it and that allows a much more positive per perspective and self growth through self inquiry so did you feel relief when you did this exercise? I wouldn't say I felt relief. I just felt like regardless of what happened, everything's perfect. Everything's fine. Everything is as it should be. So there, it's like it took the judgment out of the, and the emotionality out of the situation. And I realized, oh, it's all, it's all good. It's all perfect. Okay. Mm. So... I I remember I was facing a situation um, where I was repeatedly getting into conflict with someone and I was not able to figure out that why am I creating this situation over and over again. It's like I'm moving to different places, but I'm having the same experience with different people. It's just the name and the face are changing, but I'm experiencing the same emotion. So I realize it's coming from that one belief. It's recreating it. And the longer I run away, the more it's going to create such circumstances. No matter where I go, it's going to recreate it. So there's only ways to face it. So when I did this exercise, my higher, as, as my higher self, I realized, oh, you are not communicating your need. If you don't like something, you're not saying it. You're just silently tolerating it. The whole point of me creating this exercise for my physical self is to start speaking up. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to leave you un alone until you start speaking up. This will keep coming back. Uh, yeah, I've had the same lesson. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God. Okay, but what about my fear? So again, I went down to the physical perspective. I experienced fear. Oh, I have to say this. 
that that's very scary again i went back up and i asked my higher like with the intention as a higher self okay what will i tell my physical self when she is facing so much fear and communicating what she wants how will you what will you advise your physical self and my higher self was if you have fear then get help from somebody else escalate it to somebody else or get somebody else with you when you are going to communicate does that give you relief if that doesn't find different ways to communicate you don't have to directly always speak to that person you can ask somebody else to speak to that person you don't have to do everything by yourself and like my higher self gave at least 10 other ways that i can communicate my boundaries mm. and i was mind blown i was like i was not even thinking of this so every experience is different and in every experience you are going to learn something else as a higher self the other the other le- lesson that i think i got from this exercise was like you were saying before you know we are not just our body or our thoughts and so on in the same way i think people some people can kind of identify or get a sense of definition of who they are through something that they may treasure or or like or feel attached to um so in very simple terms it's like i am not my car it doesn't affect me it's just uh i can have i can like it or whatever i can have a preference but something happening to it doesn't need to affect myself mm-hmm. but does does that give you peace that's the whole point of the exercise so when you are operating yeah. from yeah. yeah so that's yeah. the most important part that is how you know that you are truly operating from that perspective that gives you peace that gives you relief it doesn't yeah. matter what the answer is you're mm-hmm. still being your physical self but you're looking at it from a different perspective yeah from and, from a perspective there there was no issue there was no problem and uh, i didn't have any questions about it either it just was and that's okay yeah great so what do you feel about that situation now um to be honest like kind of nothing it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> you know i'll i'll get it i'll get it cleaned up and just move get on with my life it's really not a a big thing whereas i think years ago i might have been more affected by it and taken it more personally you know so it's a When, good exercise yeah so those small things actually point to how much those small things are not small things they matter to us yeah Yeah, we absolutely. have a tendency of always downplaying on our emotions that it's something so small why am i making a big deal out of it and mm. that is exactly what we shouldn't be doing yeah 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 exactly yeah thanks for sharing that <laughs> anybody else wants to share their experience okay folks i hope you were able to experience the uh, positive effect of this exercise the the reason i always ask at the end to share your experience is for me to know if you were not able to experience that so that i can clear out certain things that you may not have done during the exercise and you can actually experience the positive benefits of it so it's all right if you didn't experience anything the quickest way to know that if this is working is what kind of feelings you feel after this experience the feelings are the key whether it has worked or not the feelings are everything that is your barometer if you're still feeling triggered or whatever emotion you are fe- were feeling about that situation even after doing that exercise then it has not been done correctly that is a sign so go back and redo it if you have to because it will bring you relief so i'm sharing this so that you know whether you are executing it correctly or not so that's about it for today's last meditation and yeah anything that i can help you with any thoughts 
any feedbacks, any suggestions? No, I just want to thank you because um, I think these, you know, different meditations we've done have been brilliant. It's something we can move forward with and carry on practicing and come back to even the group energy, like by kind of connecting to the recordings again. So thank you. So you can do these meditations anytime and it's not like you have to do all of them. Sometimes you'll feel more drawn to one as compared to the other. So whichever one you are drawn to, just do that. Like sometimes even I do only one kind of meditation like every day because I'm like kind of drawn to it at that moment. Some days I'm bored, I will be doing the others. Sometimes I'll be changing. So just go with the flow. That's why I gave you five meditation instead of doing one every day. It's the same one every day. So that you can find which one is bringing you more peace and connection. Which is like use any of any one of these five to practice meditating more often and connecting with yourself. So this is like you could use it like a permission slip to connect with yourself. Use whichever one you feel you are more drawn to. So, all right, folks, it was a great journey and I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, Mamita. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.